using Dante. Part of the Dante Certification Program, Level 1, Section 4. Dante Controller is free software from Audinate that works with all Dante-enabled devices from any manufacturer. It is the primary tool used to set up and use all Dante networks. Dante Controller is used to set up, view, and change audio signal routing, configure clocking as might be needed, adjust individual device parameters such as sample rate, monitor system health by observing actual latency behavior and clock quality. When Dante Controller is launched with no devices connected, it appears empty as shown here. And that's because Dante Controller always shows the current state of the network regardless of history. It's important to understand that the state of a Dante network, the subscriptions, labels, and settings, all reside on the Dante devices themselves. This means that all copies of Dante Controller connected to a network will all see the exact same thing. Let's connect the Dante device directly to our computer and see what happens. The device simply appears. This brings up a key point about Dante. All devices are self-discovering without pre-configuration. Note also that the device shown here has human readable names. We can adjust that name plus the names of the individual channels. There's no need for cryptic numbers. And this also brings up an important use case. A Dante device can simply be connected directly to a computer and be seen in Dante Controller. No switch is necessary for this very simple type of connection. This type of setup can be very useful as a simple recording rig using a mixing console and Dante Virtual Sound Card installed on a computer. Now, let's use a switch to connect several devices at once and they appear automatically just like the first. Now that we can see two or more devices, we can make a connection. Click the plus sign by the words Dante transmitters and Dante receivers to reveal the individual channels for all devices. And you can click the plus sign by each device name to open channels for only that device. Most Dante devices are both transmitters and receivers, analogous to sources and sinks for those who prefer that terminology, the transmitter channels will always appear on the horizontal axis and the receivers on the vertical. Let's send some transmitter channels from one device to another. In Dante, we call these connections subscriptions. We click the plus sign to show the transmitter channels on the device we want to get audio from. We then click the other plus sign on the other device to show the receiver channels. This is our destination. Note that this really is just a big spreadsheet. We can see all the available channels on every device and the intersections of those channels. Remember also that in order to connect, our devices must be using the same sample rate and bit depth. These devices are both set to use a default, 48 kilohertz and 24-bit depth. To subscribe this transmitter channel to a receiver channel, we simply click at the intersection on the grid, a green checkbox appears, and that means we're connected. That's it. If our sample rates and bit depths did not match, we would see an error message instead of the green checkmark. We've made several subscriptions in this particular example, and all we had to do was click at the intersections, see those check marks, and we're done. Deleting channels is just as easy. You simply click on that green check mark again, and it disappears. That's all that you have to do. And the subscription is canceled. Splits are easy with Dante, but often really vexing on earlier systems that required complex setup and ground loop problems. All we do is click at the intersections of the desired transmitter channels and any multiple receiver channels. That's it. No special hardware or settings are required. The transmitter audio is simply sent to all receiver subscriptions. 
When splitting audio to more than three receiving devices, Dante Controller will present a fan-out message, indicating that multicast use is recommended for optimal network efficiency. The topic of multicast is covered later. Devices and associated channels can be given names of your choosing. It's highly recommended that you name your devices before you do your routing in order to keep things clear. To change a device name, simply click the device name in the routing view. Double click it. In the device view that appears, click on the device config tab. You can edit the name as you choose. Just click apply and it's done. As you can see, the name is immediately reflected on the device in the routing view. In addition to naming devices, you can use the device view to label individual channels of transmitters or receivers. This is a really great tool for quickly identifying individual channels in a live mix and makes it easy for volunteers or newbies to use the system. You can think of it as a software version of the masking tape we typically find on consoles. In order for Dante devices to successfully subscribe to one another, they must be using the same audio format, in other words, sample rate. And this is adjustable for each device in the device view. Again, we double-click the name of the device we wish to adjust. We can navigate to the Device Config tab and adjust the sample rate and bit depth, here labeled as encoding. Now, some manufacturers may only allow certain sample rates and encoding to be used, depending upon the internal support inside their product. But by far, the most common combination is 48 kilohertz and 24-bit depth, or PCM24. What happens when we disconnect or power down devices? What happens if the power goes out? This happens all the time, whether in an uncontrolled circumstance or because we're tearing down and setting up a system. Fortunately, we have Dante to help us out because in Dante, configurations are stored in the devices, not Dante controller. So when we unplug or power down devices, of course, they disappear from Dante controller. But when we power up our devices or connect them again, they reappear in Dante Controller and all the subscriptions are immediately reestablished. We don't even need Dante Controller on the network in order to do this. Which brings up a really good question. Does Dante Controller need to be on the network all the time? Do you need to devote a computer to show this? And the answer is no. The devices contain all this information themselves. You only need Dante Controller when you wish to make a change. Let's summarize this with a few takeaways. The first is that Dante Controller automatically discovers and displays connected devices. Dante always displays devices with user-definable names. For each device, Dante Controller displays both transmitter, or source, and receiver, or sync channels. Channel-to-channel -channel connections are called subscriptions, and subscriptions are made and deleted by simply clicking at the intersection of transmit and receive channels for each device you're connecting in the grid routing view. Subscriptions may only be made between devices running at the same sample rate and bit depth, or encoding. And as you know, sample rate and encoding are adjustable, within manufacturer's limits, in the device view of Dante Controller for each device. All Dante devices remember settings and subscriptions, and they automatically re-establish these subscriptions upon power cycle or reconnection. Very importantly, Dante automatically selects a master clock from among the connected devices. There is usually no reason to change this selection. 
You don't need Dante controllers to remain running on the network. Once your settings are in place, you just simply don't need to leave it open. And remember that Dante does not alter audio data in any way. Dante is a pure bit-for-bit -bit audio transport system. Now let's talk about recording with Dante Virtual Sound Card. This is an incredibly useful tool. Level 2 of this training contains a much more in-depth look at this product, but we'll show you how you can start using it immediately using what you've learned here. Let's start by asking the question, what is Dante Virtual Sound Card, or DVS? Well, Dante Virtual Sound Card is software from Audinate that you install into your Mac or PC. And when you do, it behaves like a regular hardware sound card in your computer. But instead of connecting to attached hardware, Dante Virtual Sound Card connects to other Dante devices using a regular wired network connection. With Dante Virtual Sound Card, your computer becomes part of the Dante network. You can easily record and play out up to 64 channels of audio directly on your computer using your favorite applications, such as Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, and many, many others. When Dante Virtual Sound Card is turned on, it appears to be a regular audio device in your computer, just like any other audio hardware you might connect via USB or something else. So to connect it to a DAW, we simply launch Virtual Sound Card, set the number of channels we want it to represent, and start it. Dante Virtual Sound Card now appears as a device on our computer that we can attach an application to. On Mac OS X, DVS appears as a standard core audio device. On a Windows PC, Dante Virtual Sound Card supports ASIO, which is very common for high-performance audio recording software, or WDM, Windows drivers, very common for use with consumer audio products, such as Windows Media Player. In the audio applications you wish to use, connect to Dante Virtual Sound Card exactly as you would any physical sound device. Simply open the audio preferences for that application and choose Dante Virtual Sound Card from the list of possible audio devices to use. And that's it. To subscribe channels, we just open Dante Controller. This can be on the same or on a different computer on the same Dante network. With Dante Virtual Sound Card turned on, your computer will appear in Dante Controller like any other Dante device. The name of the Dante device is the same as your computer's name by default, and this can be changed in Dante Controller again, like any other Dante device. The computer will display the number of transmitter and receiver channels configured in DVS, as shown above. And you subscribe to these channels just like you would any other Dante device to send or receive audio. As an example, to record a show from a mixer, we configure that mixer to send a pre-fader output to its Dante card. We then subscribe those Dante transmitter channels to the receiving channels of Dante Virtual Sound Card and send that audio directly to our digital audio workstation software. Now what? Would you like to know more? We strongly recommend that you continue your path towards becoming a Dante expert. Level 2 goes in-depth on Dante Controller, Dante Virtual Sound Card, Dante Via, and more about using networked audio effectively. Thanks for watching, and good luck.